Hi, in this video, I am going to take a few questions that you have asked me um, in the video time series analysis theory. I've got a video on time series analysis theory, which has got uh, over 50,000 uh, views so far, and many people have asked uh, questions, uh, the questions below the video. So I'm going to take a few of them. First question that somebody has asked me is, in moving average model, how do you get ET uh, when you are forecasting YT? So ET stands for the error term, right? So how do you get the error term in a moving average model? If you remember what a moving average model is, it takes a form something like this, right? Um, so, uh, you know, if you're forecasting for YT uh, with the help of the error terms, ET, ET minus, uh, ET, uh, T minus 1, ET minus 2 and so on. Right, depending on what the order of the MA series. Well, you get the error term from the uh, by regressing yt with uh, yt minus one. Okay, so when you take uh, this form of the equation, when you take uh, when you regress yt with respect to yt minus one, you get et. Okay, so this is what uh, it is. So we get et from this equation. So before you plug in uh, the error term, um, you know, in the uh, MA series, you actually get the error terms, uh, you know, from this particular e uh, equation, which is uh, AR series, uh, sorry, AR model. Um, it, when actually you build a model in, uh, in any of the statistical software, you do not have to do all these things because it automatically takes care of, uh, you know, these equations. Uh, but you can, um, you know, um, you can, Proof that um, an MA series can be, uh, you know, derived from an AR series. Okay, through these equations. You know, we have got two equations, right? First one is MA one, and you get the error term from the AR one. So by plugging this error term in the AR uh, in the uh, MA process, uh, you would be able to. Uh, you will be able to. Sorry, uh, it's the opposite. Plugging the MA in the AR process, you will be able to find out. An MA process uh, from the um, AR process. So that is one relationship between these uh, two types of model. What should we do if the residual is not random and has pattern? That's a problem actually. So uh, as part of the validation of any um, time series model, uh, for instance, the ARIMA model. Um, you should ensure that the residuals uh, follows a random pattern um, or a totally it's random and there is no pattern in the uh, residual which is also a condition in any other regression model. Alright, now the question is what should we do if the residual is not random? If that is the case we have to go back and see if uh, some other uh, ARIMA model uh, is fitting your data. So how do you get to know some, you know, what is the order of the ARIMA model which is fitting the model better? Well, if there is pattern in the residual uh, and if the residual is not random, it is for sure that there exists more information in your uh, residual which should be captured or which has not been captured in the existing model. Uh, so if you have uh, used, let's for instance, uh, an AR, AR1 process, probably you have to take uh, another AR term and just try out with AR2 process, right? So when you check your ACF and PACF functions in order to find out the, uh, you know, the order of the ARIMA process, you might have missed out on uh, the correct order of the process, right? So you have to be a bit more careful. You have to do, you know, deeper uh, uh, diagnosis of your ACF and PACF function to find out the correct order of the uh, ARIMA process. Uh, there could be close, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's not that clear. So just try out with a few more, uh, uh, you know, orders, close orders, like, like you know, if you're uh, having an AR1, just try it with AR2. Or maybe if we're having an MA1, just try it with MA2 and so on. Just keep on, or maybe you just add AR and MA term both and see. And you will, uh, you know, come across cases if the model is able to fit uh, or the model is fitting your data properly, then this problem is not going to come.
okay your residual uh, is uh, uh, going to be random and you don't be having pattern the next question is if the data is completely random still we can predict future values from it right am i current uh, i'm currently working on a project which involves this concept well you are saying that your data is completely random uh, well for any predictive model any predictive model not just uh, uh, you know uh, the time series models um, any other models uh, will be of no use if your data is completely random well, I seriously doubt how do you really know that your data is completely random. You have written it down here that you know uh, your data is completely random. If it is given, then you can't do anything about it. Okay, you cannot use predictive models to predict future. But in case you are not sure about it, you can try it out. Okay, and just see if there uh, if uh, um, you know it can be predicted for future. Uh, so the question here is how do you know that your data is completely random most uh, I'm assuming though most likely um, uh, or probably you don't uh, you're not sure about this fact that your data is completely random so it's always recommended uh, it's always recommended that you check uh, check um, to ensure that your data is random else you just uh, you know build models you know gather as uh, much information as you have about uh, uh, the data um, and just try uh, you know you know building models predictive models for future uh, you know predicting future and see if um, and validate your model to ensure that uh, your uh, model is able to predict future values correctly next question is how I don't think you you say at minute 31.5 it's a pretty long video 50 uh, minute video so at 31.5 uh, 31 minute 50 second is true because differencing the data doesn't mean differencing uh, differentiating in this context you are not taking the derivative of anything uh, well you are right actually uh, differencing is not is differentiating right so if you take uh, uh, yt minus yt minus 1 you essentially do not uh, take a derivative of yt with respect to time right so that's what you mean. So differencing, this is differencing, this is differencing, and this is differentiating, right? Or taking a derivative. They are two different things. But why uh, I have used, uh, you know, uh, differentiating when I'm taking only a difference is because I'm actually taking something like this: y t minus y t minus one divided by t minus t minus 1 right so in the denominator you have got the time the current time and also the previous time when you take the limit of that okay uh, with your delta t tends to 0 this this is this particular you know expression means your derivative terms okay this is your uh, you know first difference or, uh, or the uh, first order uh, uh, derivative of yt that's why i have used um, you know differentiating uh, in place of differencing okay uh, there is they're totally different actually but i have used uh, differentiating in this context because because of this okay so you actually cancel it out right t minus when you know it goes uh, it, it if you remove the bracket so t t and minus t uh, cancelled out what we, uh, we remain with is uh, plus one right and in the denominator if you have plus one you need not have to write it down right so you know in this particular context uh, you know the differencing and differentiating uh, are same but not always right can you tell me if the time series forecasting models can be applied to predict future values of air population uh, which is air quality index. Uh, well, I'm not familiar with air quality index. Um, if it is a time series data, uh, then it certainly can be used. Uh, but uh, if it uh, if 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 there is no availability of data, uh, proper time series data, then uh, of course the techniques cannot be uh, of uh, much use. Um, 
so ensure that you have got a continuous data uh, uh, you know without uh, having uh, missing data in the in the time series uh, so you must be having data for t1 or data for t2 uh, t3 uh, and so on right you cannot have missing observations so you cannot have data like t1 and t3 and then missing and then it starts with t5 and so on you cannot have you know data uh, like this and then you you expect uh, to use time series forecasting techniques uh, that won't be uh, a suitable data for your time series forecasting model. So ensure that you have uh, continuous data, uh, continuous data as in uh, you know as in there is no missing values. Okay, uh, I am not saying continuous data as in conti it has to be a continuous variable per se, but there should not be uh, missing data for uh, the intermediate time periods can someone please tell me what the beta values will be in arp modeling and uh, the uh, phi value in maq modeling okay uh, i'm not sure from where you have taken these questions but i'm assuming that you have you you're taking beta and phi from uh, the models or theoretical models that i have shown in the video okay uh, I don't know whether if I have understood your question correctly. Uh, if you're asking about how do we get uh, the values for beta and phi, well, we get this value when you uh, do the estimations. Okay. So how do we do the estimation? You can do estimation uh, using uh, you know uh, the, um, the optimization algorithms. Okay. Maximum likelihood is one of them. Least square is one of them. And there are several other uh, optimization algorithms. Um, so, uh, so when you are using any of the statistical softwares, it automatically uh, provides you uh, this value. So you don't have to uh, worry how we how we get these values from. Uh, but to understand what this value uh, is very important, uh, you should be able to interpret what the beta values are. What uh, what uh, you know what beta values are in AR and MA model. Okay, so beta values uh, actually tell you the order of the model. Okay, the order of the RMA model. Okay, somebody has asked me uh, about my accent. Okay, I've got Indian accent. Uh, that's because I'm an Indian. I did not go to uh, an English school. Uh, English is not my first language, so. Um, I'm sorry for my accent. I'll try to improve, but I can't help much. Um, it has got uh, some influence, um, some mother tongue influence, but uh, I'll try my best to overcome uh, the Indian accent so that the international audience, people uh, with the first language of English, will be able to understand uh, what uh, my language better. Some people have asked for data set and PPTs. Uh, for data set and PPTs, I have already said uh, in the comments, I have already commented out that you just have to write to me. Um, you know, uh, checking the comment section and then taking the emails and then sending emails, uh, it's very difficult for me. So, um, it's always good if you just, uh, you know, write an email to me asking for a PPT that I have used and the data set that I have used. Uh, very soon I am going to upload the material uh, in one of the places where you can directly download from there. So I am not sure when I am going to do it, but uh, if you want it urgently, just uh, you know write to me. Okay, you have my email ID, just write to me um, and then I, I should be able to provide you uh, the data set and, and the PPT uh, you know, as soon as I get your email. Thanks uh, and please subscribe to uh, my channel and uh, i've got uh, more videos on time series analysis uh, on my channel uh, you can get time series anal analysis uh, using r uh, and using sas on my channel uh, for free so you can just watch these two videos uh, so that you know you'll be able to understand the application of uh, time series analysis theory the one that you have uh, you know the one um, uh, or something that you have learned from the uh, the video on theory. So just go through these two videos, time season analysis or RMA modeling using R and RMA modeling using SAS. Thank you so much.